Hello and welcome to a demonstration of Map My Ancestors. Map My Ancestors is a tool which you can use to integrate your family tree with the Google Earth mapping software. I'm going to make a couple of assumptions before we start this demonstration. Firstly, that you have already created a family tree in one of the many GEDCOM compatible family tree applications and use the export facilities of that program to create a GEDCOM file and secondly that you have a working copy of Google Earth installed. OK, let's get started. The first time you run Map My Ancestors there are a couple of things we need to set up. First, we need to set up where we're going to store the data relating to this program. I'm just going to store it in a folder underneath the My Documents folder. Next, we need to set up a default country. If your tree is mainly restricted to one country, then you can select that country here. This will be used if you have places in your tree which don't explicitly specify a country. However, since my tree contains people in multiple countries, I'm going to select none. That's it. Now we're ready to load our first GEDCOM file. To load a GEDCOM file, select File and then Open from the menu. Locate the GEDCOM file you exported from your family tree and click Open. If you want to load the same file again in future, you can find shortcuts to the last four files you opened on the File menu. When Map My Ancestors starts, it will always place you on the Selection screen. This is the screen where you can select which individuals in your tree to include when you view it later in Google Earth. The selection screen is divided into two halves. On the left hand side of the screen we have all the individuals which won't be included in the Google Earth view and on the right hand side of the screen we have all the individuals who will be included. Because we haven't selected anyone yet the right hand side of the screen is empty. OK, so let's include someone. Select the name of the individual you wish to include and click the Include button in the middle of the screen. This now moves them from the left to the right side of the screen. If I had wanted to include Gordon Smith and his ancestors, I simply click on his name and click the Ancestors button. If I wanted to include Leonard Smith and all his descendants, I just click on Leonard Smith and then click the Descendants button. If I just want to include everybody, I just click the Include All button. If there are individuals I now wish to exclude, I can just click on their name in the right hand list and click the Exclude button. And if I want to start again with my selection, I can just click the Exclude All button. Note that you can order both lists by name, birth, death, marriage or baptism date. If I have a particularly large tree and I am searching for certain people, I can use the filter facility. Just click the filter checkbox and type the name you are searching for. Let's imagine I want to include someone called Jane, but I can't remember her surname. You'll notice that the list reduces as I type the name. OK, let's select Jane Brown and include all her descendants. If I turn the filter off, I can see that there are still a few people I haven't included. OK, now we've selected who we want to view, the next step is to confirm that we know where all the places are. To do this, we click on the Places tab. This shows us a list of all the places that are referenced in our family tree. There are a number of points to note about this list. Firstly, you will see that some places are greyed out. 
All this means is that these places are not referenced by the people you selected to include on the selection screen. Secondly, you will see that each place has a checkbox. This controls whether or not a certain place is included in the Google Earth view. Thirdly, each place has a star rating assigned. This gives some indication of how precise the program believes the calculated location is. Five stars means the location has been resolved to street level and one star means the location has been resolved to a country level. Note the difference between precision and accuracy. A high star rating may mean the program believes the location has been resolved to street level. However, it may be a street in a different town, so don't assume a high star rating means the location is correct. That brings me on to the fourth point. You will notice that the star ratings are colour-coded. A red star means that the location has been automatically assigned. You should treat these places with caution. A yellow star means the location information was imported from a GEDCOM file generated by an application that supports latitude and longitude fields within your family tree. Both Roots Magic and Legacy Family Tree programs support the storing of this information. A green star means the location has been manually reviewed and saved to the Map My Ancestors database. In order to have confidence in the data represented in Google Earth, you should aim to have most of the stars in this screen showing in green. OK, let's check out a few locations. First, let's pick Houston. Well, it looks like the correct place has been found, as the address in the family tree is not ambiguous. Let's zoom out a bit to double check. Yes, I'm happy that this is the correct location, so let's save this location by clicking on the green plus sign. As you can see, this has now changed the colour of the stars to green. Next, let's look at Coventry. Hmm, OK, it looks like this isn't the place I was after. I was looking for Coventry in England, but because I hadn't specified this in my family tree, and because I don't have a default country set to England, it's taken me to Coventry in the United States. OK, let's correct that. If I type Coventry, England in the search box and press Enter, this now takes me to the correct location. OK, I'm happy with that one, so let's save that again. Right, let's have a look at this address in Gas Street, Birmingham. I can see that the location is very close but it's slightly out. If I use the mouse to click on the exact location, the map will be recentered on the new location. If you can't find the street name, perhaps it's changed since your ancestors lived there, and you cannot find out what the new name was, we may have to settle for a less precise location. In that case, you can use the drop-down list in the search box to go upper level of granularity. Say Birmingham in this case. However, I'm happy with that one now, so let's leave it unchanged and save that. Let's just have a look at some of the other features of this screen. On the right side we have our navigation buttons. We have buttons to move the map north, south, east and west, and to zoom in and out of the map. Above these buttons we have back and forward buttons, a bit like you might find on your web browser. These take you back and forward through your views for the currently selected place. Also we can see the latitude and longitude of the current map centre. 
and below that we have an information box that tells us who the currently selected place is associated with in your family tree. Once we are happy with the locations of our places we can go on to view them in Google Earth. To do this just click the Map It tab. This takes us to a simple screen with just two buttons. If Google Earth is not currently running just click the top button. OK, now we've started Google Earth, the first thing you'll probably think is, where's my data then? If you look at the top of the viewing window, you will see a date slider. Click and drag the right-hand side of the slider fully to the right. In your Places sidebar, you will find an entry for Map My Ancestors. If you expand this folder, you will find a folder for each individual you selected that had some geographic data associated with them. You can click on paths or place marks on the sidebar to navigate your way around the Earth. Here we're zooming in on the birth of Rachel Green. And now the marriage. And then finally her death. Alternatively, you can manually navigate using the mouse and keyboard. Now all that's left to do is have some fun with Google Earth. If you want to share your information, you can save data from the File menu in Map My Ancestors and email it to your relations, or even upload it to a website. Well, we hope that's given you a taster of what you can achieve in Map My Ancestors. If you don't already have a copy, please go to www.familytreeassistant.com. Thank you for watching this demonstration of Map My Ancestors.